is going to be a me.
are getting closer and closer to that meeting in the air. We're getting closer and closer to the world going, what just happened? Getting closer and closer to never worrying about pain, sickness, schoolwork, jobs, bills, flat tires, engines blowing up. Not going to have to worry about that anymore. Because someday soon, Jesus is going to call us away. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. Amen. 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 There's, a, there's a few of us not here this morning. For Some have already kind of seen they're sick or they're having car trouble. So that just means you have a little bit more room to worship this morning. And it also means you just need to be a little bit louder so that heaven can be, hear you this morning. Amen. 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 There we go. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord on the first day of August. Some of us are wondering where this year has gone, but you know what? All I know is I, I live day by day. Some go fast, some go slow. But in reality, all that matters is that we just keep going on towards Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer and ask him to just have his way this morning, just to move in this service, to touch us, change us. Some of us invigorate us. Some of us need a little pep in our step. Some of us need healing. Whatever it is that we need, God can do it this morning. Amen. Let's go before the throne right now. Heavenly Father, we give you glory and praise this morning. We uplift your mighty and wonderful name. We thank you, Lord, that you are our king. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for the honor and privilege to be in your presence, to worship and to praise your name, to feel your presence here this morning. God, we give you glory and praise. We thank you, Lord, for grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the peace and joy that you give us. We thank you, Lord, for the love that only you can give us, Lord God. And this morning, we invite your presence into this house, into these temples this morning. And God, that you would just touch us this morning, move upon us this morning. God, accept our worship and praise this morning. God, and touch our lives this morning. Anoint the man of God as he speaks. Anoint the Sunday school teacher as she teaches this morning. Anoint our hearts and minds and ears to hear you this morning. And to beckon unto your call this morning. And we give you all the glory and praise yes, for who you are. Yes, because you're so wonderful to us. You're yes, so merciful Lord. to us. You've blessed us so much. We can never tell it all. And we give you all praise and glory this morning. And we uplift the mighty name of Jesus this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. While you remain standing, we'll read the, uh, the psalm for this Sunday. I believe it is Psalm 146. Amen. All right. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Yes. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, in that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob, for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Yes which may heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is which keepeth truth forever, yes. which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord loseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down the Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow 
but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever and even. They, thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. may be seated this morning. Our musicians can be seated for Sunday school if they would like. Amen. God is good, is he not? Yes, he is. Amen. And while they're taking their seats, um, Friday night here at the church, we had North America Youth Congress up on the screen. It was a little different. Instead of a three-day extravaganza in a big city, they showed it up on the screen. Um, live from Oklahoma and they did like three worship songs and then there was a keynote message from the youth president and then they did what three or four more songs and then the evangelist from Florida preached and I mean you could feel the power of God come through this place and uh, we were just proud of our young people that worshiped and and they prayed and they did and they walked out of here with smiles on their faces and uh, it was a good time. I, uh, I turned into the to the district, and we had 16 people here. That is great. That is absolutely great. Amen. And uh, part of the keynote message was was not to be ashamed, because you are the generation. You are the generation. And it was it was it was, it, it, I mean, it got me excited, Brother Jim, and. Uh, because I can't wait to see what these kids do in the next few years if the Lord tarries. I think they're just going to change the city, the county. The, they may even go become missionaries and go change the nation. Amen. All right. Kids, are you ready for Sunday school? Yeah. Yeah. They're all awake. All awake this morning. All right. All right. They did something this morning. They, they all got sugared up this morning, didn't you? Or, or is it the fact that it's Sister Betty teaching this morning? Nah. Sister, Sister Betty does a great job, but all our Sunday school teachers do a great job. They have stepped up their game week after week. If this was a if this was a television reality show, uh, we wouldn't be able to kick anybody off the island. So, but uh, if you're ready for Sunday school, kids, say, "Come on, Sister Betty!" Come on, Sister Betty! All right. <laughs> I like to say praise the Lord to everyone, and glad to see all of us that are here this morning. And I probably won't be too long. My props are very small this time. Uh, I'll just explain it a little bit. Oh, I left something here. Thank you. Can You probably can't see it. But these right here, <laughs> I'll just join life. Uh, there's flowers and things. Well, one of them won't turn around, right? <laughs> so these are the flowers. And we're just talking about something like live vegetation, more or less. And this right here doesn't have anything on it. We're just pretending it's just what's left after the vegetation has been uh, taken off. Okay. I'm going to pass out some papers this morning, which I don't normally do, not here. This is for you to hang on to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Let me see which. Let me trade colors with you. Thank you. Okay. Pick your pencil and pass it down, please. 
or whichever one, just pick something and pass it down. Come on, pick one. Okay, pick one, pass it down. Okay. Okay. Some of these are a little bit different. Most of them have a picture. Look like I did get to cover all the children with the picture. And for the rest, I'll just kind of, Joanna, Sister Joanna, will you just help me pass this to whoever? Because that's all I have. So pick somebody, please. Okay, everybody have pencils? No, 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 Joe, they're not the same. I just did. You always go to the adults. Okay. I'm sorry. We are hearing something going on. trying to do Sunday school. Sister Kayton. Sister Octavia. Pardon me, you all. I'll be right back. Pardon me. Pardon me. Glad to see you. Right, we, we're trying to do Sunday school. Oh, oh. And we need y'all to come in, please. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Would you all please apologize? We're sorry. Oh, we're so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm oh, later, thank okay. y'all. Yes, right. I love I'm sorry, you. Lady. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm, okay. We'll try to do this again. Uh, thank you all for being here and try to get us together. Okay, do we have order yet? I'm so sorry, children. You all did so good, but the adults were just kind of, you know, doing their own thing. I want to say good morning, and that is part of our lesson. And what I showed you earlier was you all can open that and look at that picture if you want. This thing here says, do you love the Lord? Do I love the Lord? Do we love the Lord? I have these little butterflies, which represent mainly life and new beginnings. So that's what these flowers are about. So we have life and new beginning, which is usually springtime. Who would like to have a butterfly? I have four. There's one, two, three, four. And once they have the butterfly, you can go up there and act like they're smelling the flower. Okay, Sister Joanna, what you do with the pencils? Oh, okay, thank you. Everybody have a pen or pencil? It's just so you can take a few notes if you care to. But the children, I like for them to, oh, here, you pick the one you want. Okay, now they, when a butterfly goes to a flower, they're pollinating it and also feeding themselves. So that just means it will be more flowers next year. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Give them a hand, please. Again, it says, do you love the Lord? Do I love the Lord? Do we love the Lord? We have a picture of something. You don't know what that picture is. I don't know if some of y'all can see that or not. I'm going to ask Janaja to walk around and show this picture to every person. Just hold it out and show it to them. It's a locust. It's part of the grasshopper family. You're going a little fast. <laughs> it's part of the grasshopper family. The locust is known to start out very small as an egg, 
larvae, then it's what you call a hopper. It looks like a small grasshopper. They cannot fly until they become adults. When they become an adult, they can fly. And that's where the problem set in. Thank you very much. Everybody give her a hand, please. So this right here that looks so not so pretty, that was because of the locusts eating all of the life off of the plant. And that's what they live for. They hatch, they eat, they eat, they develop. If the conditions are right in accordance to the weather, then they start multiplying like crazy once they swarm. All right, I'm going to ask, hmm, if you come up here and read the scripture, please. We, we're getting our story. If you come up here, no, 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 excuse me. You stay right here for now. I want you to come and read for me, please. We're getting our verse from Joel 2, 28. I want you to read it really loud. Uh, right there. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Their young men shall see visions. Thank you. I want us to give Sister Octavia and Sister Kate a hand because that was really good. And it was disturbing. <laughs> And I wanted the disturbance because the, uh, and I'm going to pass these out, because, um, and, and see if you can read them, okay? Excuse me. See if you can read them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, excuse me, one of the disturbances, because the locust is uh, more or less a destructive insect. But they do that because that's what their job is, to live. Uh-oh, can you get that, please? To live and to eat. Okay. All right. Sister Jayla, good morning. Would you come give me a helping hand, please? Thank you. Okay. I'm getting ready. She's going to pass, just randomly pass out uh, one to some of the adults, please. Seem like I'm missing something. Okay. So life has what in it? If you are alive, what can you do? Um, breathe. 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 Yes. Move. Praise God. Pra Amen. Everybody, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. That's true. That's true. And it said, if we did not praise God, the very rocks would cry out. So there's got to be some kind of life going on in earth, something that we don't see. Very tiny. What else can we do if you're alive? Yes. Eat. That's very good. That's what the locust, that's what the locust does. That's how they know they're alive. Okay. What else can you do if you are alive? Anybody in the audience here? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Yes. God wants us to read his word and he wants us to love him. Okay, I'm asking what can you do if you are alive? Oh. Okay, yes. Think. Very good. Think, think, think. Very, no, you're right. All right. Talk too much. Uh, no, oh. <laughs> Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all got that one. I put my foot in my mouth, didn't I? <laughs> okay, I have, I have passed out some paper look cards. Thank you, Jayla. Everybody give Jayla a hand. Okay, whoever has a paper wants you to kind of pop up and just kind of read it. And then let me know if you think this is something that you would do uh, with the locust. Now, what I didn't say was the locust is a representation of sin. The locust is a representation of sin. Brother Johnny, that's just if you want to make a note. Some of them have pictures, and the children have pictures. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> All right, then, if you wanted to make a note, the locust, you are right down, locust is sin or represent sin, all the children. You can put it on that paper with the picture. Right, right on the paper, sin. Right on your paper, S-I-N, this word down here on the bottom. You don't know what sin is? Who knows what sin, yes, Eli? Doing something bad. Ooh, okay, anybody else? Anybody else, what is sin? Okay, I think I left a paper somewhere. No, okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of skip and uh, do something and come back to this. Yeah. Okay, everybody wrote down S-I-N under the locust. Everybody wrote that down? All right. The reason I want you to put that down because the locust destroys things. So what I'm going to do is read a little bit to you. It says, today we have a picture of a brown locust. That's the type of locust he is, although he's brown. But they store it out with many different colors. And then they end up as an adult being brown. The destruction caused by locusts eating every green thing in its path, which causes loss of food for humans and animals, even famine, starvation, and even death. There are five facts about the locusts. These insects are some of the oldest bugs remaining unchanged since the Triassic era. Brother Rob, what is that? Sorry, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> My mind went somewhere else. I wasn't listening. Uh, okay, we were talking about the uh, locusts is the oldest bug and has, had been, has not been changed since the Triassic, T-R-I-A-S-S-I-C, era. What is that? It's an era a long time ago. Uh, about how long? <laughs> about, <laughs> about how long? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Jayla. Do you know when that time is? Very, very good. What were you saying, Jayla? Somewhere like that, because this is according to how science would calculate the time and everything. So yes, it's a very old, like dinosaurish kind of insect. They are migratory locusts, or the, the migratory locusts have the largest range of any locusts. Swarms are nearby. What is migratory? Pastor That means they migrate through a the place. True. They can travel for many, 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 See many miles. And you, and you see this? He has wings, but he flies to where there's something to eat. But when they swarm, it means a big what? Get together, big, big group, big like a cloud. Well, in the Bible, they talk about the locusts. And the reason they talk about the locusts is every time the children of Israel kept disobeying God, he even sent. This prophet Joel that you just read out of the Joel told the people that he was going to send the locusts or problems or sins, I mean uh, curses to them if they don't serve him like they said they would. Mm -hmm. So he keeps warning them and even tell you what's going to happen. But this locust usually causes more trouble than anything because they have the ability while they're young to eat up a lot of the greenery in one way and as they get bigger they eat up the greenery in another way. So they devastate your land and your life. When they get to the point where they have wings, it's almost impossible for them to control them. A swarm, I looked at, a, I wish I could have put it up here, but I looked at a little clip of how they look when they're swarming and everything. It's almost like if you have, you seen little bitty butterflies, but you have millions of them. So these are, they're shaped different and their wings are different, but it'll be like all this stuff just in the way and they're just coming up off the ground and flying. Or if they haven't started flying, they're on the ground. You could literally, so many of them, you could walk on them trying to get somewhere. It's many, 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 many of them. Okay, this insect have plagued humans for thousands of years, destroyed, destroying large amounts of crops. Each locust can eat its own body weight each day. If we ate our body weight each day, wouldn't that be a lot of food? Oh 
<laughs> and, and they're growing all the time, and they're growing really fast. Well, if you had to eat your body weight, about how much, how many plates of food do you think you might have to eat? Uh, You'd be eating all day, wouldn't you? That, ooh, that'd be a lot. That'd be a lot of food. And how would you digest it in time? Would you girls want to eat that much food in a day? No tell them what we wouldn't look like the locusts. It just kind of, even if you run around, it's get kind of hard to work with all of that because you have to eat it every day. They eat like that because they're constantly changing. They actually come out of their skin as they grow and they come out even bigger. They have small wings to start with and they get bigger. So they change, almost like a caterpillar change, just a little different. And their lifespan is shorter than a grasshopper. A grasshopper, they say, can live to a year. The locusts can live about three to four months. And so that's why the activity is so strong and so fast. But they can also, the eggs can stay in the ground for months and even through a dry period if the uh, eggs were laid during a moist time in the sand. Uh, let's see. Also, the news in 2020 said that the locust has been spotted across three continents, leaving its problems behind them. So in real life time today, they're still crossing places in Africa, Asia, and going to China. Okay, sin is the same as the effect of the locust in our lives. Locust starts out small, a cluster of small eggs, then they grow to hoppers. Uh, they, when they're full grown, they become large swarms. Swarms, sorry. <laughs> as an adult, they are their most dangerous. It's almost impossible, as I said earlier, to even catch them. They use pesticides and everything, and even showing them where it was killing some of them is how strong of the pesticide they had to use. But some of them were getting away, and they still get away and doing what they're going to do, and they're still around. Well, sin starts out small and subtle. You almost don't notice it. Then it starts to nip at your mind, putting things that are not true inside of your head. It starts growing right away, and it will keep growing and soon start acting out. If the mind is not dealt with as this imaginary story gets through, excuse me, on the settle through in the process, it, it starts to stay in your mind. Then that person starts to walk, talk, and look like what's inside of them. A big, fat lie that started so small is now in the middle of the person's life and causing all sorts of problems for his person. Only to have this problem start to slip into the individual's heart. So it's already starting to be in his lifestyle now, and it's in his heart, so it's becoming a part of them. Okay, and it's, their emotions were short, the way that they speak, and literally, the way you look and everything shows what's going on in your life. Can everybody give me a smile? <laughs> so that's a, a happy, pleasant type of uh, emotion. And it's a blessing when you can smile. Sometimes things may not be like you want it, but it's a blessing when you can smile. So it says, well, sin is like that. Very slick, sly, sneaky, deceitful. Sin is evil, ugly, aggressive. The same, oh, oh, never, the same old thing. Never good, nothing right, cold, dark, unloving, wavering, untrustworthy. Wait a minute, stop here. Does that sound good to anybody? You want that in your life all day, every day? What would you like to have? Ashley? <laughs> what would you like to have? What I just read or something else? I'm hearing someone talk to me. What was it? You don't know? Okay. You don't want what I just read, right? Can someone kind of explain to them what uh, untrustworthiness is? Sister Joanna, would you explain that loudly for the children, please?
sin is aggressive. Sister Melissa, would you explain that to the children in, their, in a young way? Please. She hit a key word there. Okay. Brother Johnny, what is wavering? Uh, sometimes we move from what's right slowly into what's wrong. Or what might be wrong. Like, like you described the locusts and maybe the eggs and poppers and then learn to fly and be destructive. Sin's much the same way. If you move from your honesty, and you say, oh, it's not a big deal. It's a tell a little bit of white lies. No, it's not that big of a deal. You move on in, it gets bigger, and it gets bigger. All right, that's very good. Did y'all understand what's going on? So a little bit of ugliness get to be a big ball of ugliness sooner or later if you don't stop it. So it says we don't have time for all of this, all this ugliness and nonsense. It's time to make the change, like Sister Melissa was saying, which starts in the mind. What's the mind? Thoughts, very good. Reasoning. What else, Sister Melissa? I was just saying, good job, and she said thoughts. Uh -huh. It's all in your mind, your, what your process is. Okay, children, if I said that that bunny you saw hopping around in the parking lot was just all in your mind, what am I saying to you? It wasn't really there. So why, but you said you saw it, and you came in all excited. Look at this big thing out here, and running around. But I'm like, what are you talking about? It's our imagination. Imagination. So, Kier, have you had an imagination about something or an imaginary friend? Okay, but did you know it was imaginary or did you think it was real? Very good. All right, Eli. Huh? Did you? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the Lord. Yes. Okay. So, did you have an imaginary, do you know what imaginary is? Did you ever have an imaginary friend before or an imaginary game or playing like you have a fort or something and fighting somebody we don't see? Imaginary friend. Yes, you had an imaginary friend. Did you, what did you have, Colin? You, what was his name? Bob. <laughs> I think it's our pastor's name. <laughs> so you had an imaginary friend, same as your grandpa's name. Hmm. Bob the what? Bob the dog. The dog. You have a dog named Bob? No. Oh, oh, very <laughs> interesting. Friend was a dog. <laughs> but his name was Bob. Did you have an imaginary friend? Uh, or ideal? I <laughs> oh, what happened to it? Uh. You don't know? Did it disappear? It's gone? Or, or does it pop up every now and then? Pops up every now and then? Do you talk to it? It's in the Bible? <laughs> really? They're talking about unicorns. Are they real? Now, the ones that you see on TV, the way that they show you for cartoons of children, that's not how it looks in the Bible. It is an animal, though. Okay. <laughs> Janasia, did you or do you still have an imaginary friend? Talk loud. I had an imaginary idea. And what is it? What was it? You want to share it? You don't, she says she had an imaginary idea, but she didn't want to share it. <laughs> okay, now, do you have an imaginary friend? No, you can keep that, get your, get your paper. Do you have an imaginary friend? No. No, everybody don't, but some people do. Jade, 
You ever have an imaginary friend or imaginary vacation, imaginary something like a race car or something, and you racing down somewhere? Anything. Okay. Oh, so it, you don't have it anymore? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jayla, you have any kind of imaginary story or thoughts or friends? Uh, I used to play pretend. Pretend being, what's one of them? Animal. Oh, what kind of animal? <laughs> A lion. A lion. Ah. Have you had an imaginary friend, or do you still have one? Uh, I don't still have one, but in 2020, I had an imaginary tea party. You did? <laughs> I was bored, okay? <laughs> <laughs> did, did, <laughs> did your sister play in this tea party with you? No, she uh, thought I was crazy. <laughs> So you couldn't see who she was having this tea party with, so you wouldn't join her? You didn't love your sister enough to join her? Oh, man. Did you have an imaginary anything? No. Never? Hey, she used to play that she was Cinderella when we was little. Oh. No, I don't remember that. I, don't, I was too, I'm too older than you, remember? No, don't bust sister out, because she didn't go to your tea party, please. No, that, it's nothing wrong with that as long as it's healthy. But what we have to understand is there are times you wish or think or dream, daydream about something that you want that could be nice or soothing or comforting to you. But if you stay in that mode and you start living like that's real, then yeah, somebody might be like, um, I don't know what's going on, but she's over there having a conversation and I don't see anybody. <laughs> are they walking around in la-la land all the time here lately? So we do need to draw our minds in to the Word of God who keeps us grounded, who helps us to get what we need to get and do what we need to do. Okay, all of you that have a piece of uh, paper, if you can read my handwriting, would you stand up and just read it, please? I have to live one another. Oh, now would that be if you're serving God, if you love God, or if you're being a locust? Which one you are? Children? What would you say? Serving God? Okay. Serving God. Oh, yours is too? All right. Anybody else have something? Stand up and greet theirs. God wants us to believe that he is only the only true and living God. Okay. Yeah. 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 Did you all hear that? Okay. Let me get a mic for the children. I'm sorry. Uh-oh. Am I running out of time? Oh, thank you. That'll be easy. Thank you. Sister Mildred, what do you have? Smile, Jesus loves you. Oh, can everybody smile because Jesus loves us? Do y'all know who Jesus is? Is he imaginary or is he real? Thank you. Thank you, Sister Mildred. That's true. Okay. And read your paper. Oh. <laughs> Oh. oh, God wants us to believe that He is the only true. He is the only true and living God. He is the only true and living God. Amen. Okay. I know, know in my heart that God loves me. Wonderful. So this is these are things God wants us to do. Smile. God loves you. Amen. Okay. Smile, Pastor loves you. Oh, Pastor loves us, and they give us a reason to smile. Good. God wants us to love him, our family and friends. Very good, and that's true. He wants us to love everyone. Get your other card that you didn't read, please. God wants us to serve him, live for him like, like the Bible says. Very good. All of these are things that will help our mind to grow like God wants it to grow. Love one another. Very good. Is that what we're supposed to do? Yeah. Very good. Disobedience to God, to parents, to pastor, to authority. Oh, what is that one? So everybody say locusts. 
Locus. Oh, everybody nice. So did y'all hear that good? Let's read that again, because that was one that was different. Okay? Say it real loud, please. Oh, yes. Yeah. Stand up, please. Stand up, please. <laughs> Disobedience to God, to parents, to pastor, to authority. Everybody. And locus. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Who else has? Oh. God wants us to obey his word. Everybody say amen. amen. Sister Twyla. Telling lies. Oh, what? Oh. Boo. Locus. Oh. Boo. <laughs> Sister Melissa, you have one? No. You didn't, but you actually well, called. Okay, what would that be? I just want to smack my brother and sister. <gasps> oh, say locus. Everybody say locus. Okay, read yours out loud, please. Fighting cuz cousin. Cussing. Oh, fighting and what? Boom, boom, locusts. Thank, thank you, thank you. Hurting another person's feelings. Oh, no. Boom, locusts. Everybody say locusts. Locusts. Disrespectful to God, to parents, to each other. Oh, that is, ooh, locusts. Making fun of someone. <gasps> Oh, locus. Get wisdom and keep it. Get knowledge and use it. Yay! Yeah. 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 Hallelujah! I got two good ones. I see. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Talking way too much. Oh. Locus. <laughs> wow, y'all get me. I tell you. <laughs> Not listening, ignoring. Oh, what? Not listening to what? Your parents, God, what? Just ignoring people just because? Oh, locusts. Oh. Okay. Forgive one another. Oh, she got another good one. Yay. Hallelujah. That's true. Anybody else have? Yes, Sister Mona. Amen. Everybody, yay! Okay, anybody else have Brother Jack? Peace in my mind. <gasps> yeah. Woo! Amen. Everybody need peace in your mind? Oh, thank you. Okay, this is the last part of it. Thank you, everybody who participated. Thank you for the disturbance because the locust job is to eat and grow and multiply and die, but it leaves devastation. Sin is the same way. God gives us the right to choose. Okay, however, there are consequences to our bad choices. Joel, a prophet sent from God to God's people, telling them that there would be consequences for their bad choices that they had made and were still making them but they kept on being disobedient to God. Now we're supposed to be in talking about how to escape the locusts, and we're gonna see mainly that would be is to give your heart to God, okay? And uh, we wanna stand up and sing, I'm looking at the song, I'm sorry. Uh, Joanna, can you lead them in uh, creating me a clean heart? Just one part you don't want to, Jayla, do you know that one? That's what I was afraid of. Uh, open the eyes of my heart. That just means help me to see. Okay, will you all stand up and sing Open the Eyes of My Heart? Please, thank you. Okay, Sister Jayla, will you join us, Jay? Please, thank you. One, two, and sing loud, please. Ready, go. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. You can do the hands if you want. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, good. 
Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of his glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Okay, so we read in Joel 2.28, and I'll read this again, and it shall come to pass afterward. That was after they were warned, after they were told of their naughtiness, after God had still had mercy in them because he hadn't destroyed them, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, young men shall see visions. That means you'll be in... Uh, God's will, and he shows you what he wants to do. So what we need to do is repent. You all know what repent is? Okay, sorry, turn around. The things you're doing on your own, your own mind, stop and start seeking what God wants. And ask for forgiveness. Believe that God is real. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Ask God to cleanse your heart. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Fall in love with God, his word, and his ways. Everyone, if you, I want to say thank you for your time. And children, I have uh, something to give you. Thank you. Amen. He's talking about imagination there, Brother Bud. And I thought, thought back when I was a kid, I imagined that I was the star quarterback for the Cleveland Browns leading them to a Super Bowl. I knew that was an imagination because they ain't ever going to make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Thank you, Sister Betty. Amen. <laughs> And I thought I was going to have to get up and go out there and settle down those two ladies out in the foyer. But then I realized I saw Sister Betty give Sister Octavia some kind of cards or something or going over a playbook or something. And I was like, okay, nobody's messing with the first lady. <laughs> hey, man. You just never know what happens when Sister Octavia shows up for church. Yeah, no. Hey, man. Isn't God good? All the time. Amen. Good to see everyone out this morning. Smiling. I'm waiting to see who's going to win the contest between Ashley and Sister Jayla. On who can get the higher bun going. So, so. But God has been good to us, has he not? You're, he woke you up this morning. He got you to church. You've got clothes on. Most of you probably still have food in the refrigerator. God has been good. And we are privileged to be in his house this morning to lift up the wonderful name of Jesus and to glorify. I can't wait to see what happens in the rest of the service. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see if I have to jump back in that baptismal again. Praise the Lord. I've been in there two services in a row. And Sister Kate and I brought my go bag this time. I didn't want to get my, I didn't want to get my church pants wet, so I brought changed clothes to jump in there this time. But God is pouring out his spirit everywhere. People are being baptized everywhere. People are receiving the Holy Ghost everywhere. You know, uh, in the book of Joel, it says in the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. All flesh. Young, old. White, black, yellow, brown, it doesn't matter. Short, tall, skinny, fat, 
Doesn't matter. It says all flesh. And all you have to do is be willing to receive his gift. That's all it is. And I, I don't know about you, I'm ready to worship the Lord this morning. I'm ready to shake heaven with some beautiful singing and to just tremble hell this morning. Amen. If you're ready to worship, say amen. amen. All right, let's worship the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. You have to excuse me for sitting down this morning. But it's, it's been a rough morning, but we're going to get through it. He said if I be lifted up, he said if I be lifted up, he said if I be lifted up from the earth, said I draw me unto me, he said if I
Praise the name of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Everybody feeling good now? Amen. Oh, we ought to be feeling really good this morning. You could be in a whole lot worse place this morning. But you're here this morning with your brother and with your sister in the presence of the Almighty God. The one that came down and died for our sins. He is in this place this morning. He is here this morning to touch somebody. He's here this morning to heal somebody. He's here this morning to put joy into somebody's life. To bring peace into your life like never before. Why? Because that's what my God does. My God changes people's lives. Hallelujah. Shalom Amen. 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 I'm not preaching this morning. Don't worry. Amen. Amen. But, but God is in, in the house and I just feel him all over the place. Amen. I, and I think right now would be a good time. How many believes in the power of prayer? Brother, Brother Gary, a few weeks ago, or a couple weeks ago, you, maybe it was this week, you testify about how God touched you during the Spanish service. Brother Jack's been healed. Sister Mildred's been healed. Brother Braden's been healed. Brother Jim's been healed. Pastor's been healed from a heart attack. Everybody's been healed in this place. That's what God's in the healing business, and I'm going to do something out of the ordinary this morning. Well, not for me, but for you all, maybe. But I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask Brother Gary to come up here with me and Brother Mike Braden to come up with me. Brother Jim, I know you're not feeling well, so. But uh, we're going to pray for Pastor right now. He is in a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort. He's going to try and preach. But we're going to, you guys come up here. I'm, I'm, he, he can stay seated. And church family, I just want you to, we're going to go before the Lord right now for him. For our, for our spiritual leader. For the one that in the middle of the night when everything's going wrong, you can call him and he'll answer the phone and he'll pray with you. And right now, he needs to be lifted up. And we're going to pray for him right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Almighty God, we come before you right now for our brother, for our pastor, Lord Jesus. We come to you right now and ask right now that you would touch his body. God, you said with your stripes we are healed. And I, right now in the name of Jesus, I beckon healing mercy to come down and touch him right now. God, right now from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, God, strengthen his body. Remove the pain and discomfort right now. We give you glory and praise for what you're doing right now. We magnify you, God, right now for the healing touch. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we claim healing right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for praying for the pastor this morning. Hallelujah. We've got many of that aren't here this morning. Sister Kim is on, I think, day five of this cold. She said she's around the bend, but she just didn't want to come and pass any germs on anybody. Uh, Sister Karen, she texted me this morning. She can't make because she's having car trouble. She's hoping it's nothing big. And, uh, and, but she's watching online right now. Uh, we want to remember the Dickersons are here this morning. God would continue to bless them this morning. Let's remember Sister Terry and Sister Melissa this morning. Um, let's remember them. Anybody have a need they want to bring before the Lord this morning? Brother Johnny. Amen. Brother Eli. Grandpa Steve. Grandpa Steve, yes. 
Uh, Grandpa Steve actually called yesterday, someone he knew, um, found their sister, 50 some years old, had been beaten to death. So, so number one, we want to pray for that family so God can bring peace into them, wrap his arms of love around them, but number two, that God reveals to the police who did it. And, that, and uh, uh, we want to remember that family in the name of Jesus. Sister Mona. Pray for my son. He's having a hard time. He's been through alcohol and everything. He's been He's just, he's living so he's been Jesus. He's not saved. All right. His name is Mo. Mo, all right. Brother Colin. My sister on the way. Your sister on the way. All right, let's remember that. That's a good prayer request. Remember your sister, let's remember your mom. And your dad, because he has to deal with your mom. Just dealing with the sister that's on the way. It's kind of like a domino effect. Amen. Anyone else? Sister Melissa. You got in trouble at work. God will take care of that. It's nothing to do with actually being my actual fault. <laughs> you know, that's true. It's something to do with the system, but they're going to try to make me go back on site and prove it. I understand, understand, sister. I understand. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, let's remember Bob and Darlene Collins. Who are moving here from Tennessee? They happen to know this guy, yeah. and uh, that their move go well. I mean, uh, they could even get the house done early; wouldn't offend me one bit. So, uh, yeah. but we want God's hand to continue to help them as they yeah. transition from Tennessee to here. Yes. Another thing, if you haven't noticed, there is a for sale sign in front of the church. Uh, we're past God to sell this property. If it doesn't sell for what we're asking, we're not moving. We're not going to give it away just to buy another property. We want God's will, and that's what we're asking for. And I believe God has supplied. I even said, Lord, let there be a bidding war if it's your will to sell it. Everybody else has got a bidding war. Why not us? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Remember that. Remember those that are to be traveling this week. I'm not sure who's going to be traveling this week, but I'm sure somebody's going to be traveling this week. And kids going back to school. Kids going back to school. Janasia, you survived, I see. All right. That's good. That's good. Oh, my. Yes. Homeschoolers will be starting soon, I assume. I assume they'll start soon. That's too hard to say. But remember the teachers to have to deal with our kids. I mean, our kids are perfect. What am I talking about? Yes, Sister Caton. Remember those that we baptized recently. Yes. Yes. Yes, that was, that was wonderful to see them go down. And um, if you all can see the picture on Facebook of Sister Terry when she come up out of that water, grinning from ear to ear. And you get to see the, 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 the change in her face. And, you know, she, she, I don't think that smile went away until at least all the way out the door. And uh, so she felt the power of God just to just take everything off of her. And that was wonderful. And uh, this morning, as, as we pray, if, if you need a healing in your body, if you got, need God to remove something, come forward. We will pray for you. And because God is still in the healing business. We have many testimonies of it. And I believe this morning that if you need a healing touch and you come in faith believing that you're going to walk away from here this morning with that healing touch, you're going to walk away with that healing touch. Amen. Brother Henry. You need to pray for Brother Josh. Yes, Josh and Stephanie. Let's remember them this morning. Amen. Let's go before the throne right now. Almighty God, we come before you right now. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, for being the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. We thank you, Lord, for being our 
joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for coming down on a cross and dying for our sins. But more importantly, God, we thank you, Lord, for getting up out of that grave three days later, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us, for every car wreck you've spared us from, for every blessing that you've given us, for every job that you've given us, for every home that you've given us, for every car, for all our clothes. We give you glory and praise for it, God. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. And we come before you right now and as a united family. We come to you right now in faith believing that you can touch these needs that are in this house this morning. God, we give you glory and praise for it right now. God, we ask, Lord, that you would touch Sister Karen's car situation right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you would bless her right now in the name of Jesus. God, for Sister Kim, that you would go into the home right now and you would touch her body. God, that you would take that sickness out of her in the name of Jesus. For Josh and Stephanie, Lord God, that you would continue to draw them closer to you. We give you glory and praise for it. We magnify you, God. We uplift you, God. We thank you, Lord, for it. God, for Colin's request for his mom and for his baby sister that's on the way. God, that you would bless them, Lord God, that you would touch them, Lord God, that you would make everything be all right all the way through the birth, Lord God. We give you glory and praise for it this morning. God, for Sister Mona's son this morning, God, that you would touch him this morning, Lord God. Draw him closer unto you. We give you glory and praise, Lord, for Brother Johnny and Sister Melissa's request in their lives, Lord God. God, that you would move in the name of Jesus this morning. That you'd move on those situations, Lord God. We give you glory and praise for it right now. God, for those that are dealing with death, God, we give you glory and praise for your miracle working power, for your healing touch this morning. We your wonderful name. We glorify your wonderful name. We uplift the wonderful name of Jesus. We praise you this morning. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, our kids pay attention. And here's how I know just now. Eli came up here. He didn't want prayer for himself. He wanted prayer for Mason, his cousin. Now, I don't know if Mason's going through anything, but God speaks through our kids. And that's, and that, and that's something that we should take to heart, too, that God puts somebody on your heart. Start praying for them. You just don't know what they're going through this morning. Amen. You may be seated this morning. And, uh, uh, Sister Karen, you may be seated. Sister Melissa is going to come up and sing here in a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Uh, Brother Henry, would you put up the announcements, please? Uh, obviously, you're here. It's Sunday morning. Tuesday night is prayer meeting at 5 p.m. Wednesday night, midweek service at 7 o'clock p.m. And uh, we've been having some great prayer meetings. Can I get an amen? amen. We've had we're having some fabulous Bible studies. And, uh, and we, I mean, we baptized someone after a Bible study. I mean, uh, that's, that's a great way to end a Bible study. Um, this week, I will be doing the Bible study this week. So make sure you bring your crayons and your pencils. Uh, don't forget that. Uh, tonight, singing at 6.30 for our Singspiration. It's the first of the month. We're going to do that. And then on the 15th is the youth service at 5 o'clock p.m. Followed, immediately followed. So I expect all adults to be here, please, by Jayla's on loan party. Uh, we're going to throw a little party downstairs for her. And I say on loan because we're not going to let her go. We're going to hold on to her tight. We get, we get one word that she's acting up, Sister Octavia, and it's going to be a race between me and Brother Caton and Sister Joanna on getting up there. <laughs> Mama, Mama's got a lead foot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Sister, Sister Jayla is going to be fine. We just, we're going to miss her while she's on loan. Um, and then August 21st, our Spanish service at 4 o'clock. Let's see. We'll just, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. They've had two services and four people get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Uh, August 28th, Ladies' Day Out at 10 o'clock a.m. here at the church. Um, that. I'm going to assume it's going to be a great time because I, I won't be allowed to be there. But, and then, uh, that's what I hear. August 29th is going to be Collegiate Sunday. Wear your favorite collegiate shirt, jersey. Some of you ladies, bandanas, no ball caps. Uh, but uh, we're going to just, we're just going to kind of have a fun time in the Lord that Sunday. And, uh, do that and then in September we got brother senior coming on the second Sunday in September right around the corner is going to be the harvest festival and then Thanksgiving and then then Christmas times coming it's just it's coming fast it's coming fast so we got a lot going on this morning let's worship the Lord this morning with sister Melissa Praise the Lord, everyone. I always give God thanks and honor and glory for allowing me the privilege to get to come up and, and uh, play and sing. And the song I'm going to do today, I, I haven't practiced it in a while, but God's laid it on my heart for me to do. And it's for his honor and his glory. And sometimes we will pray and have to pray for a long time. And we want stuff to move in our own time. But... God's not going to do that because we want it to be done. It has to be done according to his will, but it's for our good. So I just thank God for that. I'm going through a battle right now, a huge battle. But ultimately, God is in control of it no matter what happens to me. And I just thank God for keeping his hand upon me. And thank you all for 
having me here and me be a part of your all's family and just wanted to let you guys know that because I love each and every person and uh, I don't mean to take too much time but I really need to say it yesterday when I was in there with the ladies and everybody was showing me the materials and how to how to make stuff and even though I can't sew with the machine or anything like that you all made me a part of that and I uh, don't know how to express in words how that made me feel to, to, to be accepted and I thank you guys for that and just worship with me as I sing and bear with me because I haven't practiced this King Jesus I know you'll hear me when I Angel 
with him for a few moments this morning. He's done something for you this week. He's touched you this week. He's blessed you this week. I said last week we were still in camp meeting. It still feels like camp meeting around here. Brother yeah. Jim, if I would have seen those keyboard keys keep on moving up and down while she had her hands in the right, I wouldn't know we were in camp meeting still. Why? Because God's still moving. God's still touching people. Hallelujah. That is awesome. God is awesome. Amen, amen, amen. Sister Joanna, do you have a song? Yeah, let's, let's do that and then we'll bring the pastor up. Actually, how about you sing the chorus while we do offering? All right, Colin, would you take up the offering this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you've bestowed. We thank you, Lord, for every gift you've given to us. And this morning, God, we ask, Lord, that you would just bless every gift and giver this morning as we give back to you some of what you've given to us. Use it for your glory and for your kingdom. And we magnify your wonderful name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't have to get quiet. Let's worship the Lord this morning.
and I will praise you forever. And I'll worship you forever. I'll give you glory forever. Cause you're worthy, Lord. Forever. I love you, Jesus. Forever. I praise your name forever. 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 Because I am free. Because I am whole. And I will tell. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for that. You were worth saving. I was worth saving. We're all worth saving. There's nothing that we can do that God can't cover with his blood. Amen. Amen. Some of us have come from very bad places, but God can do it all. <clears throat> Pastor, come preach to us this morning. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. Praise God. He's worthy. He is worthy of all praise. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know what's going to happen, except I know God's still here. He's still on the throne. He's still doing miraculous things. I was thinking uh, since last Friday, somehow I got a pinched nerve in my right hip. And uh, yesterday it really hurt. This morning it really hurt. And I said, well, God, maybe I need to stay home. So I said, Sister Caton, would you preach? And she said, who, me? So I said, okay, Lord, I'll get up and I'll get going. Now, Sister Caton, she sometimes doesn't give herself the credit, but she does a marvelous job. She really does. Praise God. But I said, well, Lord, it's going to be on you this time. I, I'm going to give it all to you. I've, I've read, I've studied, and I'm giving it to the Lord this morning. I was kidding Brother Jim, just that he came in a little bit late. And uh, I've noticed that he and Twyla have been married a little over a year, and his strength is starting to go. And I notice his mustache is gone. And, you know, I thought about Delilah, she got the whole head. But Twyla's taking him one, taking the lip and then the hair. <laughs> little by little, she's. <laughs> He's thinking on that. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. She had to figure out his weakness. And probably when he had his head laying in her lap and she was feeding him grapes. And what's your secret, honey? <laughs> she... <laughs> and he said, hamburger. <laughs> but God is so good. <laughs> you need to be able to laugh in church. If you can't have a good time in church, where can you have a good time? The Lord put in my heart a few, few days ago about the Ark of the Covenant. And in 1 Samuel, we're going to get to chapter 7 here in just a few moments. The Philistines had encamped around Israel and they looked, they were defeated basically because they were outnumbered, greatly outnumbered. And the Ark of the Covenant came into the camp and all of Israel began to rejoice. And as they began to rejoice, uh, the Philistine army became fearful because this is the same God that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage. And it parted the Red Sea and all this stuff. And they had heard about the great and marvelous things that God had done. And as they had heard about these things, they became fearful when they heard the children of Israel rejoice in their camp because 
God is victorious. He's the God that's done all these great and mighty things. And I begin to think about the Ark of the Covenant, how that it's the presence of God is in the Ark of the Covenant. And then I begin to relate to us how we have the Holy Ghost living within us, that we have that Ark of the Covenant living within us, the Spirit of Almighty God dwelling in us bodily. And I began to read a little bit more about what happened. And, and the Philistine generals or captains or whatever you want to call them, leaders, said, don't be fearful. Don't listen to the noise, but go in and capture. And they did. But not only did they capture and defeat the Israelites, they took the Ark of the Covenant. Now, sometimes the world thinks that we're beat, we're whooped. Whooped is a word I learned as a young man because I got a lot of whoopings. I still do. I heard that. I know where you live, and I definitely know your dad. But they brought the Ark of the Covenant in. They had defeated God's army. They thought they had the world by the tail. Sometimes when the world looks at one of us and we mess up and we make mistakes, the world says your God isn't so great. And they think they've got you beaten down, that you're defeated. Well, world, you better be careful of what you grab to hold of. Because it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. So they took the Ark of the Covenant and they set it next to their God, Dagon. And they're all celebrating because they have been victorious. They have overthrown and taken the heartbeat of Israel. Well, they celebrated that night. But hold on, the morning's coming. Hold on, the morning's coming. When your enemy wars against you, and whatever that enemy can be, it can be alcohol, it can be uh, pornography, it can be cigarettes, it can be anything in this world that is so uh, devastating to the temple of God. Because know ye not, ye are the temple of God. And you may think that, the enemy may think that he's victorious, but hold on. Be careful what you grab a hold of. Because they got up the next morning, and <laughs> their god Dagon, the statue, was face down in the dirt. And they began to remember about all the victories that Israel had been given because of this god. Wow. This great God, the God that healeth thee, the God that leadeth thee, the God that directeth thee, the leader of, of his people. And they became fearful, very, very fearful. You know, the world is trying to take what we believe and say it doesn't exist, that we're foolish, that we're we're uh, old-fashioned, that there is no God. Be careful what you wish for. Because judgment day is coming, folks. The scripture tells me that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. So the, the, the world may think that it has the church by the tail and, and that it can do whatever it wants to do, but my God is going to give us victory. But see, there has to be something that's going to have to happen for that victory to come. Well, they saw what happened to their God, and they said, well, we can't have this. So they moved it to another city, and they were cursed. So they took it to another place. Brother Rob, start with chapter 7, 1 Samuel. Because I came here today... Because I'm here to tell you something. The pain has left my hip. Because I know the speaker's here. 
I'm here to tell you that there's somebody today that's dealing with something that you don't know how you're going to overcome. Well, you're going to overcome it by the power and the glory of Almighty God that can dwell within you and give you the power to overcome whatever you're going through. God is able. Brother Rob, read, please. And the men of Kerjathjerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass while the ark abode in Kerjathjerim that time was long, for it was twenty years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Hold right there. Brother Rob, would you pray, please? Almighty God, we come before you right now. We ask, Lord, that you would anoint our hearts and minds and ears to hear what you have to say to us this morning. God, that you would anoint the preacher as he brings forth the word. And God, we give you glory and praise for you're about to change somebody's life. And we give you thanks for it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, In Jesus' we pray. name. You may be Amen. seated. Praise God. Thank you. I'll probably have you in a minute. The world is not your friend. I, I remember when I was growing up, if you worked at Link Belt or Chrysler or Ford or a Harvester or uh, any of the, the big companies, man, if you had a job there, you were set for life. But then as time went on, those same jobs that were so great, men got greedy. They started taking away uh, benefits that you have. And those benefits became less and less, and then they would find reasons to, to get rid of you because they didn't want to pay you retirement. They didn't want to pay your medical. A lot of those things faded away, but yet you had invested your whole life into these companies thinking that one day I'm going to retire and I'm going to have all these things so when I retire I can live the life of, of retirement with ease and joy. But you put everything into those companies and you thought, man, they're going to be there. Well, those times have changed. Things are unsettled in the day in the life in the world that we live in. Uh, you used to think that you could depend on the government. Well, we've learned over the last few years you can't depend on that. But there are a lot of people that, man, I'm getting a check from the government. They're going to take care of me. They're going to do this for me and that for me and this for me and that for me. Well, I got news, and especially you young folks, nothing's free. Somewhere along the line, something's going to cost somebody somewhere, and eventually it will cost you. Because if you serve this world, it's going to disappoint you. And if you get all wrapped up in all the politics and what the company propaganda is about, we need more productivity, and you're the greatest employee that's since sliced bread. You ever heard that one? Oh, yeah. It's been a while. That you're the greatest thing there ever was, you're going to go far in this company. Well, I can testify they'll tell you that stuff, but eventually somebody comes in, buys out the company, and says, how much do you make? Well, we can't pay that kind of pay anymore. And out the door you go. And I guess what I'm trying to say is we make a lot of things in this world God's. We make a lot of things in this world to be so important and so glamorous. Well, there's only two things that's important, and that's death and resurrection. You're going to die if the Lord tarries. But are you going to be resurrected on that day? Because the things of this world are going to pass. 
I remember if you went to work at Ford, it was probably $30, $35, $45 an hour. Now they want to start you out at $15, $16, $17 an hour. So your money isn't worth a whole lot either because the car that Ford used to sell back in the early 1900s was $500. And you could work on it. Now you get a car, we've got to get some mechanic, and we got one here in the, in the group. He probably makes more money than he's worth, but that's busy. <laughs> but everything costs so much, and the Bible talks about in the last days you work but for repentance. In other words, your money's not worth much. So you, you put all these things out there in front of you, and you may not realize it, they become your gods. My job is what I live for. My paycheck is what I live for. My car is what I live for. When I was a young man, 69 Mustang, I got the wax out. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> it was pretty. I mean, it would fly down the road. That was my God. Going fast. Sorry, Sister Kate, but have a girl sitting here on the right-hand side. I go through the corner sideways so she would grab my hand. I get her to hold my hand somehow. I didn't do that with Sister Kate because I thought she might hurt me. But that was my God then. And, and you, you think about all these things, the, the movie stars that want to tell us how we need to live. Well, you don't live on my street. I learned to like baloney because that's what I could afford. That's right. I learned to like potato chips if they were on sale. And I've been eating a few more chips lately. I learned to like a lot of things. But when I came to a realization that I was going to die one day and go to hell, and by the way, it was because of Daddy prayed for me 29 years, save my children. And that day that I, I remember the Lord whew, scared the fire out of me. The clouds became dark. You know what it looks like before a real bad storm comes? I got scared. And I said, I need to change my life. Ended up getting baptized in Jesus' name, getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And you're thinking, I'm here. I'm saved. I'm derived. Is that a good attitude? I didn't think so. The Bible says to serve him with fear and trembling. You see, I didn't start out to where I am today. And I got a long ways to go to where I got to get to go. But I learned that I needed him more and more every day. And that I had to take as the children of Israel had to be told, put away your gods. Whew. Put away foolishness and start to think about what God has done for me. Turn back to the old past. You know, I'm all for jumping and running and dancing and all this good stuff. Man, it's awesome. But there's something that you need more than the jump. There's something you need more than a shout. There's something you need more than just to feel good. 
You've got to have something inside of you said that I know, 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 that I know he's real. And he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him unto that day. I got to know that. And I got to put away the cars. And I got to put away all the, the, the things about money and job and all this stuff. <coughs> because he is my everything. He is my all. <coughs> he is my everything, both great and small. He gave his life for me. Made everything new. He is my everything. So how about you? You see, the reason they lost the Ark of the Covenant, because they had a shout when it came in, because they thought the victory is won. Well, sometimes the victory we got to win it's got to come through prayer and fasting and seeking the face of God. God doesn't just lay it out there sometimes on a silver platter and say, you've got all the victory. You've got everything you need. Sometimes you've got to put a little something into it to get something out of it. It's not a free ride. How much do you want? Do you want? Do you want what I got? It's not going to happen just because you want it. I remember we had prayer here a few weeks ago. Probably been two or three months now. And I said, this is birthing. Prayer requests to be taken care of by God. It's birthing revival. It's birthing souls being baptized in Jesus' name. It's birthing healings in people's bodies. All these things God does, but it took travailing before Zion. Now, some people travail real well in public. Ooh, I'm going to stepping on toes. Charlie Rich used to sing a song, When I Get Behind Closed Doors. You country folk probably know that one. When you shut the door, how bad do you still want it. Now I've gone to meddling again. How much do you want the peace and the joy and the righteousness of Almighty God? See, it starts within your heart and it goes to your mind. Later on, we're going to read here in just a second. The ark is going to return. But the person that wanted to possess it, how do you say, Abinadiah? Abinadad. He was blessed because he possessed the ark of the covenant. Yeah. We'll learn later that I believe it was David that said, we got to go get that thing. Because he wanted Israel to be blessed. Now that was something that was confined. But today we have something that he will not that any should perish. That all should come to repentance. You can have the Ark of the Covenant living within you right now. The Spirit of Almighty God dwelling in you right now. You can have the, the power and the holiness and the righteousness of Almighty God living within you, dwelling within you, leading you, guiding you, directing you, helping you to overcome whatever you've got to overcome in your life. Because He's here. How do I know he's here? Well, I'm walking around. I couldn't do that just a little while ago. And if some people think, whatever, Sister Kate will tell you last night I couldn't sit, I couldn't hardly move. 
My God's real. He's real, folks. He's real. He's not a figment of my imagination. He's the Lord that healeth thee. He's the Lord that makes a way out of no way. He's the Lord that will deliver you from whatever you're going through because he has the power. And you give him the authority in your life. If you lay down the gods in your life, he'll help you to overcome everything, everything you're going through. See, he's no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. Used to, if you wanted to take something before God, you had to go to the priest to go to the Ark of the Covenant. Right. Now, hold your ears. Jesus! Are you desperate? Are you going, Jesus? Whew. How bad do you want it? Brother Rob said it a few times lately, if you listen to him. The snot running down your nose. The tears running down your cheeks. You prayed and sought the face of God so much your voice is, is hoarse. You have travailed before God because you became desperate. You were worried that you were going to go to hell. You were worried that what you were doing was going to kill you, destroy you, take you out. So you became desperate. And until you become desperate, until you really make up your mind that I'm going to serve God, No matter if I got money in my, my billfold or my purse. No matter if I got a car to drive or don't have a car to drive. I'm going to serve him. Amen. I'm going to put everything I got into it. Amen. Do I have all the answers? No. And if I'd have learned that years ago, I'd have been a whole lot better off. I don't have all the answers. He does. Because all power in heaven and earth is given unto him. All power. Not some power, all power. But then the scripture tells me, after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, Ye shall receive power. You've been given the keys to the Cadillac or the Lincoln, which is a Ford. Just saying. What do you do with the keys? Well, I want to go somewhere. So if I want to go somewhere, that means I got to open the car door. I got to unlock it normally first. I got to open the door. I got to get in. And I got to put the key in the ignition. Now, some people got the key in the ignition, but they haven't learned to turn it on. Now, the thing that scares me is when that low fuel light comes on when I turn it on. That means somewhere along the line, I've got to gas it up. So that means I need to stop at a filling station. That means I need to go to the house of God, spiritually speaking, and get my tank filled back up. Because if I want to go anywhere, i got to get that red light off and get that key turned on and get ready to go and get it out of park and put it down and drive and stomp on that accelerator and say, Woo, look at that gauge go. Ain't no red light going to catch me now. And if we get that idea in our head that we've got the power in the name of Jesus yes. and the car's sitting there already. He's, he's already paid the price for it. No payments. That's right. 
Isn't that awesome? No payments. You put that key in the ignition. Now, if you drive a foreign car, it's ring, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> How much Holy Ghost do you want? <laughs> you want that ring, ding, 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 ding. Or do you want run, 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 run? Sometimes you got to get into a good old American made car and turn the ignition on and hear that muffler go boom and realize that you got the same power in the Holy Ghost. If you'll get in the genuine thing and get out of something else that isn't from God, God's going to turn it on. And when He turns it on, you're going to put your foot to the accelerator and you're going to go. Like you never went before. I'm speaking to somebody today, whether they're here or by our Facebook page. It's in your court. The keys are here. The power of God is here. But it's up to you. Do you want to sit and park? Brother Bud, when I was young, which has been a few days now. I had a lot of friends when I was putting gas in the gas tank to go places. But the minute I said, you guys want to pitch in some gas money? Well, man, uh, 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 uh. I heard that words a lot. Sister Jaylee, you need to learn that. And I get in the car and sit. I had no gas to go nowhere. It's when I started working, getting a paycheck, and I found out my friends weren't my friends. See, sometimes we're still wanting to stay with the world. We're wanting to run with the world. But the world don't want to put any gas in our gas tank. We can't get where we got to go because the world wants to take it away from us. Woo! Praise God. But when I went to work, and got my own paycheck. I said, bye-bye, guys. All you wanted to do was run with me for what I had. And that's what the world does with you today. Because one day, folks, you're going to find out the world is cruel and mean. And it's only what you've done for Christ that's going to last. Yes. You're sitting in here today. You're sitting in a Cadillac. You've got the keys. Can the music come? You've got the keys. Yes, Sister Fallbush, that means you. <laughs> You're sitting in here with the keys in your hand. Up here you can come and you can put the key in the ignition. Do you have a song you could sing? Can I give you a few minutes to get that? It's up to you. You're driving. <laughs> She'll do fine. You see, the altar's up here. The key's in your hand. You can come or you can stay. But when you get up here... You got to put the key in the ignition. You got to turn that key. Now you can turn it once and the lights come on. But then after you turn it once and the lights come on, it's how bad do you want it to go? Because then you have to turn the key. Now it used to be when they were carburetor cars, you had to give it some gas. So we're going to go with carburetors. I remember them old chokes, man. If you did it wrong the first time, it was hard to get them started. And then I learned if you just put your foot all the way to the floor and turn that key, eventually it would... <laughs> you see, coming, from the, coming to the Lord and turning that key, sometimes it gets you a little choked up because the carburetor's too rich or the choke's set wrong. 
But if the red light's on in your dash, you just got to go a little bit harder and work a little bit harder. Could we stand? Is God good? Yes, He is. Is the world bad? Sister Betty did it well. What was that bug she had? We don't want no locusts here. Boo! I'm here to tell somebody somewhere. He's no respecter of persons. He don't care what's in your past. But he can give you a future that's beyond anything you could ever imagine. Sing, please.
Give the Lord praise. Praise God. 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 We're going to be baptizing Mr. Eric here in just a few moments. I would like for a couple of young folks to get up and help move some stuff over, please, and move some things. Praise God. And I want Sister Kate to come and testify. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated, folks, just for a little bit. Praise God. Amen. Oh, thank you. Brother Rob says, ain't God good. Thank you. Ain't God good. Hallelujah. 
I'm so thankful. <laughs> I'm so grateful. My heart is so full to see and know and be a part of what's going on today. Hallelujah, how the Lord is pouring out that latter day rain, that spirit of oh God upon all people. As Somebody said earlier, it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter how big you are, how little you are, how poor you are, how rich you are. These blessings and this salvation is for every one of us, no matter what your background is. If he can do it for me, it's an ugly story, my past. But my future is bright and beautiful because of my God, because of who Jesus is, because of this precious salvation, this precious Holy Ghost. You know, yesterday, we had a wonderful time, didn't we, ladies? How many stand, stand up those that were here yesterday? Now, this is just a portion of us. There were 17 ladies here yesterday, and not everybody was sewing. We had a group, Sister Melissa, part of that group, and she brought a friend, Brianna. And we had a bunch of ladies that were sitting and watching and talking and helping. And I appreciate everything that everybody did. You know, it, it's not one person. It's not a couple of us. It's all of us working together. And that's the thing about this amazing family of God. It doesn't matter. We all work together, and we will see more and more and more of his blessings, or we'll see the devil trying to stomp on us, but we know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We are victorious. We are the ones who come out the winners, and I'm so thankful for everything that he's done for us. <laughs> So thankful for each and every one of my grandchildren and what a heritage God has given me. I am first generation apostolic, but I'm telling you, I'm looking right now at third generation apostolic. Yes. And I'm thankful. I'm just so very thankful. Thank you, Sister Kate. Praise God. Praise God. I told you she could preach. Praise God. Now, Sister Twyla would have been here yesterday, but somehow she had to go to work to pay our retired people Social Security. So, Sister Twyla, say a word for the Lord. Do we have a towel? Take care of you. All right. We're all singing for it. Come on up. Yes. Not as warm as it was.
Apostolic grandma, is that correct? That used to take you to church and all those years of praying for you have now been fulfilled today. Am I right? So folks, don't ever give up praying. How many years ago that been? Because he, he's older than he looks. How many years ago that been, Brother Eric? Eighteen, so we're looking at about eighteen years. But God does fulfill yes, he does. what you ask him for. Amen. Thank you, Brother Eric. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Uh, it's the first Sunday in August. Who has a birthday in August? Right now, wonderful. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for our brother. 
Yeah. Yeah.